Hi YouTube, Andrew from Chief Machine here. I'm trying to start off my uh, Fusion 360 videos with how to set it up correctly. Or, well, at least my taste on how I do it. Well, without further ado, let's jump into it. When you fire up Fusion 360, um, this is what you see. Um, what I would like, what I changed first before I even hunted around was how to turn this grid off. And thankfully you can do that. Go down here to grid and snaps. And uncheck this layout grid. Gone. That is the first thing I absolutely do. Then I looked around hunting to change uh, any preferences such as graphics or uh, projecting sketches, etc, etc. Keyboard shortcuts, you know. But you go under your name, in my case, Andrew Folkert right here. And you go down to preferences brings up this dialog box where you can change a whole bunch of goodies. I just start at the top and work my way down. Um, user language, I, I speak English, so that's what I'm going to leave it at. Graphics driver, it, I believe it's on auto select when you first fire it up, but I switched mine to DirectX 11 because that's what my graphics card supports. Now you uh, might want to look at yours uh, to make sure to see what it is. But our, Pretty much, if it's six years new, six years or newer, it's going to support DirectX 11. If you're not sure, um, you can easily just bring up Google, type whatever your graphics card is. Mine's R929X, DirectX. See, supports 12. Pretty simple. Type it in Google or your browser or Bing, your choice. And then I just move on to the next uh, setting. Uh, I change this. Uh, I notice this default modeling rotation, change that to Z up. I notice that right off the bat. Automatic recovery, s save time incremental, five minutes. I think it's personally a little low, so I'm gonna change that to 10. Uh, the show tips, this show Autodesk notification, I leave that all on. This uh, default orbital type, this drives me nuts in other programs. Uh, this constraint orbit, it rotates. The center is your X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, zero, zero, zero. That's where it rotates around. That's the center point. Now, which, that's fine if you draw your part around that XYZ 000 point. Now, now let's say if you have a lot bigger assembly and your part is 10 inches from that, it's really, it starts to do some goofy things when you try to rotate around there and it personally drives me nuts. So I change it to free orbit, which I'm not sure if Fusion 360 does this, but I'm pretty sure it does is it rotates the center point is your wherever your cursor's at. Um, I haven't found this confirmed in any of the Autodesk literature, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, so yeah, if the, you like it around zero, 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 X, Y, and zero, leave it that, but I personally don't like it. And if you use SolidWorks, you won't like it at all because it's completely different. Speaking of that, then we go on to the pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts. Default to fusion, that drives me nuts too. I use SolidWorks, you know, for six years plus at a professional level. So I'm used to them. I got to memorize, so that's personally what I use. And plus, I think they're pretty intuitive, so I like them. This, nothing in here. Nothing, this design tab. Um, I see this design history, I leave that to capture for the parametric modeling. That's a lot like SolidWorks or Inventor where you can go down the feature tree and change and edit patterns, holes or counter bores or what have you. But instead of right here where you're probably used to if you use any of those programs or um, a Libre, a Libre is a lot like SolidWorks too it's not down here it shows up down here and we'll get that into a future video I'll show you guys that 
just default model space next thing I don't do any sculpting you know I haven't I don't really use it I mess with solid modeling um, pretty much all the way now if you use freeform or a lot of surfaces then you might want to switch it to this but personally I don't everything I do is pretty much a model and you can't cover everything when you're setting up your uh, your cam workspace I my boss told me cover something for 90% and so I said yeah over about 90% I model so that's what I'm defaulting to cam moving on cam I don't mess with any of this drawings inherit from design so whatever the model part is that's where I stick with uh, the material I do a lot of aluminum uh, parts that's uh, mainly what I deal with aluminum jaws aluminum fixturing it's pretty much like I said 90% or more is my stuff is aluminum so that's what I just defaulted it to again you can easily change this to whatever you want they got stainless steel platinum gold whatever whatever you use uh, default it there graphics I don't change any of this stuff um, if you have a lower power computer you might have to change some of these settings to uh, get some better performance but if you have a fairly high-end newer desktop or even a laptop you should be okay you shouldn't have to change anything network never change any of those network settings I don't understand why they even let you change any of this this data collection this thing is this is pretty interesting they want to they're sending you're sending data to um, Autodesk for them to review and that's interesting I personally unchecked all this but this um, you know read read through all this stuff I'm not gonna bore you guys with all the details if you want to read more they got the quick more just go through it now this is probably the another one of the things you'll want to change when you first fire it up um, three place is where I use or four place because I use inch now if you use millimeters you probably want to go to one or two place but up to you um, I use inch 90% of the time like I said with the 90% number so that's what I use and I like three place four place I think crowds the model and you know, sketch space too much so that's why it's set to three place um, notation never mess with any of this but I do I like seeing the zeros because I like the three decimal places and it makes it's I think it looks I like consistency so I I wanted to see the trailing zeros and speaking of default units you can change them for each space down here the design cam and simulation so again whatever you use now I don't think there's a way to use templates um, but I will look into that and let you guys know because I would like a way to set up inch uh, millimeter and foot templates foot being for like shop layouts and architectural type stuff um, but I haven't found one but I'll look more into it now the cam I use inch pretty much in everything because the machine set up the machines that I use are inch machines but you can flip them to flop back and forth simply and easily uh, the simulation I use English um, which I just seen this I want to change I changed uh, this to all I'm gonna change this to inch <clears throat> and uh, pound fours time English units uh, BTU watt or horsepower joules per second feet per second degrees now all my units are English units or inch units except my temperature 
I changed that to Celsius because a lot of the parts, computer parts I design in the computer world, everyone uses Celsius for their temperature readings. And it's just it, converting them back and forth all the time gets cumbersome. So I can just leave my length, mass, and all this stuff to English. I'll just leave it to English and I'll customize it later but you can mix and match your units for special cases like mine which is really nice actually so you can convert units like in my case I use uh, temperature in Celsius a lot so that would be that's nice to change one well, moving on the preview tab this is like the trying out new uh, functions but it's not full-blown yet this is a big one this will change your sketch, anything you sketch out from blue to black if it's fully defined. And it's really nice to de determine that you got a fully defined sketch. And this is to ask you just if they want more, hear more about it. Just, I click no thanks. Now, cam, laser jet, uh, laser and plasma. I personally use a laser once in a while, so I'm going to turn this on also. But if you do not, again, just don't check it. This library and collaboration support, I don't ever check that and mess with it. But maybe you guys will look more into it and tell me what if you actually use it or not. Now, I just applied the settings and hit OK. Now, there's one more setting that I want to change. I know that's in here. Just hit this drop down and hit create sketch. Now, click one of these planes. It frankly doesn't matter. See, you got a grid again. This thing drives me nuts. But thankfully, over on the sketch uh, palette, palette, <clears throat> you can turn the grid off just with the simple check marks, and bam, it's gone. Now, I don't see any other little grids or anything else. Just hit stop that sketch. And that is how you set up. Now, there's some other nice things in here. Like, if you use a lot of the push and pull, you can add these. Why isn't it letting me? Add this. Like, if you use the rectangle a lot, you can add it to the toolbar. See, there it goes. Just use a lot of those up. Use a lot of the point. You can add it. Add it right to the toolbar. Which is quite nice, actually. See, there's the fillet. I use fillet a lot. I use combine a lot. I use move a lot. Uh, extrude. Revolve. Hole. And mirror. That's personally how I like it. Now you may have noticed that some of these keys have L next to it, which if you just hit L, it brings up line. And if you hit C, it brings up circle. Now I strongly recommend some of you guys learn uh, these keyboard shortcuts, but Autodesk does have a on their website, uh, all their keyboard shortcuts for Mac and Windows. I don't use Mac, I'm a Windows guy. All the software I use is Windows only. But Fusion 360 is Windows and Mac, so that is pretty nice. If you guys are Mac users or a mix of both, like some people are. But uh, Extrude E, that's a good one. Hole is H, Q, Push Pull. But they got a whole list of them. I'm not going to bore you guys out. But here's the link where you guys can uh, pause and screenshot this. I'll pause and leave it stationary for a couple seconds for you guys. And they got a key nice keyboard shortcut. Um, and it just tells you it was available in the September 2015 update. But we're in December. So they had this all in. All right. I pretty much wrapped up my setting up Fusion 360. Well, for my use, uh, please comment, like, subscribe, 
or don't if you didn't like the video at all or find anything useful please let me know all right thank you